Okay. We're going to be talking on the impact of, of poetry in the society and its economic benefits. We're going to be looking at um, our guest today is Vine the Poet. And we said that Vine is, is a mass communication graduate, is an insp inspirational artist in poetry, revelational writing, is a campaigner, an entrepreneur, and co-founder co of iTech. He also has... He is a radio and a TV personality. He has authored books in poems, poems and uh, uh, he has authored books in poems and more in poems and morals, poetry and audio po album. He has poetry and audio album. He is also a new. Thank you. We can see now. We can see our. We can see our guest. Thank you for joining us back. Thank you for joining us back. Yes, thank you. Thank you so for joining us back. So today we're going to be talking on today we're going to be talking on the impact of poetry in the society and its economic benefits. Remember, Poets Factory is on a mission to raise a global community of young inspiring poets and writers who will inspire the world and liberate the world from oppression, suppression and depression, thereby making us the most inspiring poetry resource of all time. So we have a mission in Poets Factory to build a platform where young writers and poets can hear their voices and inspire their world through poems, spoken words, and write up. Thank you again. My name is Moyosola Olalekon, and welcome to the Voices of Poets. Yay! Thank God it's Friday. So now we'll be joining. We'll be um. We'll be going live with our guest, Vine the Poet, is Luchuku Vine Eve Luchuku. Thank you, thank you so much. Welcome here. Please drop the love button. Drop it. Yes, we're waiting for him. We're waiting for him. Yes, we're waiting for him. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> What's been happening now? What happened? Apologies. I had so many calls. I was attending to you, so I'm sorry for. Joining. Uh, okay. How are you? All right. You look beautiful, Moyo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> are you working from home today or what's happening? Yes, as well. You seem to be working from home. Yeah, as usual, you know. Every day is like that for now. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. Oh, cool. That's cool, that's cool. I hope they're not going to disturb you <laughs> today. Well, and I'm going to... All right. Okay. So, uh, please say hi to our guests. Today he is Vine Izluchuku Vine Izluchuku. Yes, he has written a lot of poems. I would like to ask him, where can we get your books, your albums? You know, you you, you are artist in point in um in um, poetry. I've hardly heard of that. So where can we get your your poem books? Do you have them in audio? Do you have them in you know where can we get them? Okay, let them just go to Google, search for Vine the Poets, and then they get to see so many links uh, attached to my audio albums so you you get to download them some of them from not just okay.com and you get to see some of the audios and uh well, some of the writings from where write. please can you come again please can you come again you go to google and type vine the poet uh, okay got some links and some titles of some of the audio albums that i've done so you get to download some of them from the site uh, not just okay and then, uh, of okay. course, of writings too. The moment you type in the poet, it brings up so many of the things I've done and all of that. Oh, okay. When we did last year for the campaign and all of that. So you get to follow up on okay. Google. Okay, so, so you are saying your, your, your poems and audio poems are actually free to air so we can see them? Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. And also, also okay. we have CDs, uh, the physical CDs, yeah, those ones, are, uh, those ones are with me. Although we did some circulation about a year or two years ago. Yeah, and all okay. Of, then uh, right now uh, it's because of the internet age and everything, so we get to do more of online internet and all of that. So we, that's what we'll be doing from now on: more of internet and not just CDs. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. All right. So um, we would like to know um, how did you start writing? Like I always like to ask that question. I always I know there's a reason there's there's, there's you should know when you started writing and why you started writing. What is our writing point? And why poetry? Well, uh, poetry for me was not a thing for me back in, when I was very much younger. Uh, in secondary school and all of that, I didn't see poetry as anything. I didn't, in fact, I hated poetry because 
he had a lot of, um, well, I say complexities and all of that. So it wasn't really my thing, even though I was in the arts department. Uh, it was after secondary school that I started developing interest in writing. And I started scrabbling things on paper and all of that in rhymes and stuff. So, and then I could, mm -hmm. I could find out that anybody who comes in contact with it makes meaning out of it. And I'm like, mm, great. Sure. Well, I'm like, wow, seriously. Okay, maybe I should just start considering this thing, arts and all of that. And again, I don't, <laughs> anything you have on the inside, yeah, it only takes mm. a little bit of time to come out. Even though I, yeah, I sure. stage, you may not really know, you may not really even like it. But as time goes on, there's something, there's a link, there's something that will, you know, take you to it. And they find out that, oh, really, you can do this and all of that. And since then, since I started writing poetry about 2008. 11, 2000, 2010, 2011. Since then, it's been wow, awesome. such a long time. Yeah, 2010, 2011. It's been awesome since that time. Writing, mm. voicing, audio poetry, and all of that. Mm, been, mm, the, the audience so far, the fan base is very, very good. Wow, wow, wow. wow. So that's why you see the audience and the fan base. <laughs> So how do you get your audience? How do you create your audience? How do you get your fan base? Like you're saying audience fan base since twenty eleven. Like how many years? That's about nine years ago, right? About ten years ago. Yes. Just ten years. Ten years ago. So so please let us know how do you how have you been able to build your audience, your fan base? And how what's the strength of your fan base? The truth is this. Um anybody who has a lot of fan base, I don't really have a lot of fan base, but then I have fan okay. base basically. Okay. So you don't really get to tell how these things are done. All you need to do is just push out a good work out there. People will turn up. People will create time oh. for you. As far as you can be able to arrest yeah. their attention from you know, your work yes. and all of that. They recommend you. They pass your work to another person. They pass your work to another person. And then before you know what's going on, you're creating fan base and stuff. And people that you don't even know get to contact you and call you. And then it's like, mm -hmm. what do you mean by this? What do you mean by this? And then like, social media age now, of course, it has enhanced mm. the situation and all of that. So it's been on recommendation, interviews, media, everything is just, you know, all about that. So, so do, you, do you do poetry presentations? Do you go out for poetry presentations? Well, I'm a poet, a poetry writer. And <laughs> spoken audio. But the stage is not really my thing. If I'm going to the stage, you... if I'm going to the stage, uh, for oh, you have stage breaks. <laughs> no, 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 not really. <laughs> stage is everything. It has to be my normal inspiration. I'm going to the stage to inspire people. I don't go to the stage okay. to write poetry because uh, I don't have a good memory. Let me put it that way. I, I'm not good at memorizing a lot of poetry and <laughs> all of that. For me, if I go to the stage, it's spontaneous. I get to deliver content. I get to inspire you and all of that. Okay. No, it's not really. I'm not really a stand-up um, um, poetry guy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So maybe maybe we'll have to push it today. Maybe we'll have to create an avenue for Bind Poet to do that. <laughs> to test his other that. side. Yes. I tried that, actually. I tried it a couple of occasions and all of that. But then, you know, once it's not really our thing, we have stand-up, uh, like, like you have comedians, you have situational comedians, like on the movie, you have stand-up comedians on the stage. Uh, so different people with different things and all of that. It just, it just, it just like that. But when it comes to writing content, as far as poetry is concerned, or any other creative piece or whatever, yeah, mm -hmm. not good. All right, thank you for joining us, Blue Screen. Thank you for joining us, Op Ifenla Oluwa Femi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, K Ashrop. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. God bless you. All right, so um, we'll be asking our our guest today. We know writing, creative writing provides potentially is a potentially important tool that enhances learning opportunities especially in children and even in youth you know so what are the economic benefits attached to these and what are um, um what are the economic benefits attached to these and what is available for the young and the old what economic benefits in poetry is available for the young and the old Okay, let, let me start uh, with the other question before the very last one. Uh, what are the okay. opportunities uh, for the young and the old? Uh, what yes. are the poetry for the young poets and the older mm -hmm. poets and all of that? For yes. the younger poets, poetry gives them a platform to express themselves. 
it's it's mm. self expression of self now for the younger ones mm. and for the older ones poetry gives them a platform to relate their experiences because they must have gone through mm. a lot of things in life and all of that so they might want to uh, um, relate their life experiences for the younger ones and the people to actually learn at large then generally generally if you want to talk about the benefits of you know uh, 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 poetry or creative writing as the case may be and, and the society that we're living in it it helps people it helps a particular people to see their beauty mm. know, several people actually i appreciate to see their beauty yes it helps them to see their beauty not a lot of people actually uh, uh, appreciate what they have or see what they have actually mm. I'm beautiful. True. You can be handsome and someone tells you, wow, you're so beautiful. You say, wow, seriously? I've not really seen it. But <laughs> we get to see how beautiful a people are and all of that. Then, of course, uh, and it's not just that. We're talking about economic benefits now. By yeah, seeing sure. Beauty, by seeing the beauty that a people have, that way it helps them to attract foreigners. It helps them to attract other people to you. And hence that mm. attraction comes in patriotism comes in, and then tourism mm, yeah. and all of that, those are economic benefits and stuff like that. By the time we write a lot of things about Nigeria and project it outside there, mm. people outside the country will see what Nigeria has that we may not really mm. know about and all of that. And before you know what's going on, it goes beyond patriotism. You, then you now begin to talk about, oh, well, fine, okay, let's go and mm. do tourism in Nigeria. Let's go and explore. These are things that they've said about these places. Let's go to Lumorok. What are the economic benefits? Let's go to Kalabani. Mm. Let's go to so many places because we've been mm. about all of these yeah. in the past years. So people want to know mm. what, what are these things? What are they doing? What use? Or how can we mm. do these areas? And all of that. Apart from that, too, poetry exposes strengths and weaknesses of the society. You, you talk about mm. certain poems. You talk about poems that exposes the ills of the society. Because we can just be running mm. this and we don't know we have ills, we don't know we have strengths and weaknesses and all of them. It helps them to show how far apart the different strata of the society are from one another or how close mm -hmm. they are you know, to, to each other and all of that. So by, by mm. the time we have published this fact, then we cannot be able to use poetry to create a bridge Mm. that would link the various strata of the society together. In that way, we we'll have, we'll, mm. would have created a relationship, then thereby creating a common ground for ourselves and all of it. Mm. Because, of course, every society is divided into three, the lower class, the average class, and the upper class. If there's nothing to bring the classes together, to bring a like, common understanding, mm. then, of course, True. living in yeah. that and all of that. Of course, poetry also helps us to build... Uh, 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 a common bond in the society, you know. It 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 helps. Read what? Sorry, can you come again, please? It can you come again? Build bond. It helps us to build, build what? Bond. It helps us to build bond. Okay. Yeah. That, that okay. A, okay. Bond. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. Bond. Yes. And then and then it helps us to appreciate our heritage and value. Mm. It helps us appreciate our heritage and value. Some of us may not know what we have or what our fathers have left for us past year so it helps us to do all of this and all of that and then again of course uh poetry goes a long way to uh us understanding the length people mm. can go for what they want mm. what do i mean by wow that? um mm. with true poetry we get to see the length or the desperation of some people in achieving what they want to achieve for example i i, I was always um I, I was always intrigued and fascinated by uh, one man's poem, his name is Andrew Marvel, so he's called Mistress. Even in my book, in my first book I wrote, I actually did a parody of that book. Uh, so his called Mistress mm -hmm. was a book by Andrew Marvel. And in that poem, mm -hmm. he appreciated the lady that seemed coy to him. He appreciated it and he told the lady how what he can do for the lady, how he would appreciate her for a thousand years, how he would do this, how mm. he would do that, and all of us. So through poetry, we get to see the land people can go for either love, the land people can go mm. for either wealth, the land people can go for either wow. sickness, as the case may mm. be. You understand? Mm. Let, let me just sum it up. Let me just sum it up. In summary, poetry helps us to heal and be healed. Okay. Yeah, sure. To heal and be healed. It, it also purifies. You know, when you let it out, when you, when mm. you just 
you know, you have a lot of things stuck in your mind and you want to let it out. You let it out, you heal someone. Your experience you've gone through, what you've witnessed and everything can actually heal someone who has read your mm -hmm. piece. Yeah. All right. Thank. Let me cut your. Let me cut you short there. Thank you. Thank you. You you really expanded on this topic. You talked about something. You said projecting. You said uh, poetry helps us to project. So we can actually project Nigeria or project our economy or Africa as a very viable place, right? For investors, based on what we as creative writers do with our writing and based on what we write. Are you Are you there, Vine? Hello, are you there? So it was talking about poetry as um, it, it, uh, poetry brings, it gives us a common understanding, creates a, create a bond and appreciation for each other. And poetry also helps us to know the length that people can go. All right, the length people can go, yeah. you know, in, to get what they want. So I'm trying to ask Vine now, Vine the poet, please, you yeah. talked about projecting. You know, I picked that word projecting. When you say when you, when you when you say projecting now, do you think as a, as creative writers, do you think we have? Uh, do you think Nigeria or Africa is there yet? Like, are we are we actually are creative writers actually bringing out content that can that can that can make the world see us in a bigger in a bigger way in a better way, not just with the five Ds of destruction, death, um, um. You know the the five these destruction, death, um, um, uh, you know, okay. war and all of that okay. stuff. So, are, are we actually? Because I feel that if we talk about projecting, I feel that as creative writers, we have a lot of role and a good role to play when it comes to projecting Nigeria and Africa in a very, uh, uh, in a in a in a very in a viable place where we can actually welcome more investors and the world at large, both the Europe and other continents of the world, can see us as not just people who are hungry, who are poor, who lack, who don't have anything, but they can see us in a better way just by what we chunk out, even from our titles. You, th you, think, you think we are, we are there yet? What do you think? Well, first of all, to start with... Um... We can project who we are not. Mm, true. Oh, okay. Africa is a continent uh, with mm. many, um, uh, with, let's say, heterogeneous people. I mean, rich, mm. poor, average, as the case may be. Maybe before now, we may not have been projecting Africa or Nigeria so much. Mm. Hence, that's where our right. ability as poets come in. Because we don't have much of these people who will help project Africa in a good light. Before now, what we, what we have had are people who seem to paint Africa and Nigeria in bad light. How poor mm. we are, you know, how low we are and everything. And you forget the fact that whatever <laughs> you say out there that you are is what people believe that you are. True. And all of yeah. that. So uh, and that is where our responsibility comes in now, handy. We, we need to start projecting Africa because the truth is this. Africa has a lot of potential. Africa has a lot of value that we can project. Now, someone who is a poet is someone who sees life from different angles. He doesn't just see what the politicians see. The politicians see how people are now responding to his political ideas, as the case may be. But the poet sees it on the other side too. Maybe there's something mm -hmm. there's, there's there's a, a mal leadership or something going mm. on that people are not responding to. What are the needs of the people? Mm. Where are they, who are they? And all of that. So, mm. it's a different sides to see things before we can start projecting. So, but then people who are projecting as well, they 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 need to explore more. They need to observe more. They need to find more. They need to do more research because Africa is not. The thing is, this you you can't mm. search the whole of Africa. We have a lot of things that are beautiful that we can project. And it's, it's, it is through okay. that projection, it is through that projection that we begin to attract, not just patriotism, like I said before, but investment. If you project Africa mm -hmm. right, if you project Africa rightly, beautifully, people will begin to buy into the African market. People will begin to invest True. in Africa. People will begin to invest not just in our mineral resources, not just in our material resources, but in our human resources. Mm -hmm. All of that. Because yeah, true. 
we have people, we have natural resources, we have everything it takes in Africa, actually. Mm. The only thing is just that we have been mm. um, bad leadership over the time and everything, but then we can't, mm. we can't keep complaining about bad leadership. The best we know True. how to do, and the ones we know how we can do it, and all of that, we'll begin to do all of these things through our writings, through our voices, as the case may be, as True. much as to show the world that Africa has got something. Yeah. yeah. We got something, yeah. Africa got something. We got something. We got value to offer. We don't just have death and destruction going on. We have greater things in, that we have inside of us. Like you said, we said we should look inwards. We all have great things, great potentials, great gifts, you know, that we can convert into great leaves, you know. So um, let me ask you this question. Poetry is seen as a mnemonic device to promote the memory and retention, especially in children that use rhymes and poems for their learning. You know, children at the growing up years, they use rhymes, poems, you know, to enhance their learning. Now, what are the emotional forms of, of this language that is used and the emotional benefits derived from this type of learning, especially from children that learn at, you know, with rhymes and poems from a cradle age? Thank you for joining us. Um, Chebu Chekube Ucha, thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank Hi, you. Guys. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> let, let, let me try this question. Um, let me start this way. <laughs> let me start this way. Okay, let's consider, first the, let's consider first the human emotions, right? Right, the human emotions basically, uh, you have love. You have fear, you yeah. have happiness, sadness, surprise, mm -hmm. you have disgust, you have pain, etc., and all of that. Now, through poetry, uh, 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 they, they have a better idea, the children have a better idea about how these emotions work and thereby uh, can express themselves in, 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 any, in any of these emotions. When kids, yeah. what we, the problem we have is that our kids are not really sensitized enough, are not mm -hmm. really. Aware not there for them. Hence, they suffer in pain, they suffer in depression, they suffer in abuse, they suffer in bully, they suffer in so many things. These things mm. are not really, the awareness is not much for them, actually. Yeah, but true. even they know about these human emotions, which are love, hate, mm. happiness, sadness, surprise, mm. and everything, then they can better interpret them. Because you cannot interpret, you cannot accept mm. what you have not really felt or seen, as the case may be. True. So the children need to be sensitized more so that they can best interpret the human emotions. Mm. Like I said, the human emotions are there. These are the things we come in contact with on daily basis. Especially and emotions. channel it properly. Yes, yes, of mm. course. These are the things we come in contact with on daily basis. It's either you are happy or you are sad and all of that. What matters is not really mm. how sad you are, but then how to impart with mm. your sadness. Even your sadness you can impart. Even your happiness you can impart. No matter the emotion mm. that you have, actually, you can better interpret these emotions. Uh, let me cast your mind back on when we had mm. our program the last time, the kid who was talking okay. about suicide or depression or something depression. like that. The yeah. kid has been sensitized, has been experiencing something like that, and can be able to yeah. interpret such emotion. At the age of eight, she's At eight age, years old. Now, you want to tell me that such kid would not really know mm. how to handle depression as the case goes by? Yes, of course, the kid is not being aware of that kind of emotion and how to express yeah. yourself. That expression helps the kid. That expression mm. not just helps only the kid, but helps other people too to tackle that kind of negative emotion, as the case may be. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and this way, if they are aware of all of this, that's why we must try as much as possible to recommend. I like what West Factory is doing, you know, trying to create portrait clubs here and Thank there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And all of that. So that <laughs> aware informed. That way they can fight depression. That way they can fight yeah. low self-esteem. That way they can fight abuse. That way they can mm. fight fear. They can fight bully. They can fight everything. Because trust exactly. me, these are things that are going on in the society and the kids are not really informed. And hence, if they're not informed, yeah. they cannot perform. And all of that. Mm. We need to create a society where we can have more children mm. learning the art of poetry. Because poetry, trust mm. me, poetry has a lot that we can tap mm. into. Uh, Vai, let me cut you short there. Okay, so how, how do you write? What, what, what's the best form of inspiration that you get before writing? Like, what's the best posture in writing? What you want to write? And how do you get your inspiration? Okay, inspiration 
comes in various forms. Uh, there's no particular posture to write. There's no particular, <laughs> no particular anywhere to do anything. There's no street and fast rule to anything as far as it's creativity. Creativity is something that is crazy. Let me put it that way. Creativity is crazy that it can come at any time, anything, you can do anything at any time and all of that. You know, I, mm -hmm. my phone has a pad, so it's always glued to me. I can immediately, anything comes in my head, what I see on the social media, what I see on real life, what I hear people do or say as the case may mm -hmm. strikes or stimulates my inspiration. And then, of course, mm -hmm. I pen it down and all of that. So it's, there's no particular way. The thing is this, I, I'm into education. And as much as possible, mm -hmm. I try to study people, students especially, how they respond to learning and all of that. People mm -hmm. respond to learning in different ways. That's what you call IT, yeah. but different. Mm -hmm. One, a student can prefer to read in a very noisy environment and mm -hmm. still graphs everything he's reading. Some other people can prefer to read in a noiseless area where you even hear the sound of a pin on the floor. That's how they work. That's how <laughs> <laughs> While some other people, they don't mind whichever platform, they don't mind whichever environment, whether it's a noise <laughs> or a noise full environment. A noisy environment. That is the same thing that happens in yeah. poetry. That happens in poetry. Mm. There's no particular standard for it. You can just, all you need to do is just express yourself and all of true. that. That's true. Just it. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um. Have you, uh, so, so, okay, let me ask you a question. How can a lead person make connection with a poetry line of faith? You know, and how can they tell that they have been impacted either consciously or subconsciously by what they have read? Now, you know, we have different type of learning and um, you know, you're also into education. Also, you know, people, we, many times we learn and we are, we learn, we learn subconsciously because those things we learn just enter into our subconscious and we don't know that we have been impacted. So how can a lay person who reads a poem or a poetry or any creative writer make connection with a line or phase in poetry? Because I'm sure some people may have difficulty in making some connection with some poetry lines, you know, or phases. And how can they also tell that they've been impacted consciously or subconsciously by what they have read? Let me start with the subject of that question. The subject of that question okay. is lay reader or lay man, as the case may be, right? Yes, uh, yes. Let me, let me put it this way. We cannot discuss that if we have not really highlighted or discussed the challenges uh, we have as regards reading, as regards the approach, you know, in terms of reading and creative uh, the approach to creative content and all of that. Okay. We have a challenge in Nigeria or in Africa. Uh, I, I don't want to say the challenge we are, we are still having is the reading culture. No. The reading culture is gradually improving because of the mm -hmm. presence of the internet and the presence of the social media and all of that. Before now, people, the reading culture was actually very, very low. Uh, they mm -hmm. facilitated and enhanced the reading culture. Hence, people are now reading and all of that. That's not the challenge. The challenge we're having now is not reading culture. The challenge we're having now is the attention to poetry. Yeah, okay. The attention to poetry. And what am I saying? The attention to poetry, given that people, we need to work on the attention that people give poetry because people give poetry the lowest of the attention. And now, our forefathers, our four uh, uh, people who have written poetry in the past, you know, like the earliest poets and all of that, they did a great job, mm -hmm. had a weakness. The weakness they had was that they made poetry seem like a very difficult task. Yeah, true, they, true, they yeah. Made poetry, they made poetry complex, thereby... Exactly, thereby yes. People <laughs> ...making people disinterested about poetry. Exactly, and, yes. Let me put it this way. They made poetry for the elites in the society. If you're not educated mm -hmm. and all of that, you can't read the old poems, especially by Shakespeare, mm -hmm. especially by um, uh, Shakespeare, the earliest poems of China Chibede and uh, Wally Shoyinka and all of that. If you're not an elite, if you're not knowledge and have a, mm -hmm. a, very, a very broad uh, um, uh, understanding, you can understand those poems. Those are limitations. Mm -hmm. True. Now, yeah. one thing that's bedeviling our today's society is those things, that approach, that idea has actually driven people away over time that they don't have that love 
or interest or attention span to shower on mm -hmm. words anymore. It is yeah. now responsibility now to carry everybody along. As far as we put out there, you write you write a creative content. It's your responsibility and my responsibility and all of us to carry everybody mm -hmm. along now. The layman, mm -hmm. educated, as the case may be. How do we need mm -hmm. to do that? We need to simply evolve with time. Yeah, true. How do we do that? The modern time now is the social media time. People are not just really doing only text. I'm not, I don't want to say people are not reading. People are reading. You can still write on paper and all of that. But we need to be sensitive to the development, to the, the, the environment of the society. Because now people like what they can hear, what they can see, and all of that. Mm. No, no. There are different ways that we can now make poetry to be, instead of the ways that our forefathers have made it. And all of that. We can do audio poems. We can do visual yeah. images because yeah. what is about imagery and all of that. Yes. Is, is yeah. Create this beautiful picture in the minds of the audience and the minds of the people. If we keep doing just poetry, a piece of poetry, and we write it and we post it there, or we print it out on a book like that, it lies lifeless there. If you show someone, do you like poetry? They tell you, I like poetry, but when when it comes to reading poetry itself, it's kind of mm -hmm. boring. Yeah, it's true, true. Complex and everything. So we need to mm. improve and use the things that can attract that that uh, uh, that anybody can simply relate to it without any difficulty. Are you there? That anybody can oh. simply relate to it without any difficulty. Yeah. All right. Okay, are you there? Yes, we need to create a platform where everybody can relate to poetry. That's why I like poetry clubs. That's just a okay. Point. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Because yes. And speaking, and speaking, let me call this And speaking of poetry club, um, we are starting. West Factory is launching its first in a series of poetry club, starting from June. So we are going to be having um like once in a month, twice in a month. We we'll agree. Um, virtual poetry club. We are launching a virtual poetry club. That's beautiful. Come June, yes. I'm also going to be launching a virtual poetry club for for children for the from the ages of eight to twelve and thirteen to um seventeen years old. So we have that in the pipeline already. Poetry club, yes. That's that's. Beautiful. We wanted to do that by meeting one on one, but because of the entire COVID nineteen thing. We got to be strategized. We got to reposition ourselves. And that's why Poets Factory said, okay, let's do it as virtual. So, yeah. um, guys, stay tuned. There's more to come. <laughs> so, like I was saying, it, it's, uh, it's now our responsibility to try as much as possible. Now, let me give you some idea. Let me give us some idea. In, in the moment yeah. that we are right now, poetry can be included or poetry can be made in form of movies. We can include mm. We can include poetry in songs. We can include not just ballad now. We can include poetry mm. in visuals and all of that. We just we're just trying to evolve with time. These things are yeah. very very because if we keep doing the usual, just write poetry and just leave it there, nobody's gonna read. Nobody's so gonna read it. We need to find out. We need to find out the interests of the society and inject poetry in those areas. True. 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 Hmm. Well, it right now on Instagram and mm. all of that. Most people on Instagram and all of that. Make a one minute video of poetry, express yourself. Don't really make it so serious. Express yourself in poetry and post. Mm. Um, um, yeah. Content, maybe a movie or something where you have so many sections of poetry and the conversations, poetic conversations and all of that. That mm. go, That's trying to evolve with time. Let's just not just do mm. the writing and posting and all of that. Go to radio stations or TV stations, as the case may be. Buy time if you if you have the resources, or you can if you can call for the resources and all of that. Read poetry in the ears of the people, poetry that can create beautiful pictures in the mind of the people. You know, mm. when they listen to radio or when they look at the TV and all of that, they see something going on. They see a poetry with beautiful lines and all of that. That mm. parts and all of that. So I think. We need to learn from the weaknesses of our forefathers who wrote poetry. Please, if you have any questions, please drop it for Vine. He'll be ready to answer you. Please, if you have questions, questions, our topic is the impact of poetry in the society and its economic benefits. And one of the things we've learned from Vine, the poet today, is that we've learned that we can we strategize our poems into audio 
visuals, recitation, into songs, into stage plays, you know, yeah. so that we can communicate best with our audience. You know, we need to find ways as poets and writers, creative writers, to communicate in a way that is very effective for the layman. A layman who may not necessarily have time to understand what you are writing, but can understand pro properly through visuals, through, 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 through stage plays, through songwriting, you know, audios and all of that stuff. So, um, it's, it's, it's very, it's very, it's, it's welcoming. I, I appreciate, I really, really appreciate this. So, Talking about um, the economic benefits for a new creative writer, what are the economic benefits available for somebody who is just coming into the industry of creative writing? Okay, uh, having identified the challenges that we have, which I believe that um, these challenges will help you to you know, shift or adjust and all of that. We have so many economic opportunities as we got uh, in poetry and all of that. Firstly, you can compile your poems into what you mm -hmm. call anthology. Uh, the anthology will help you to uh, package your write-up. If you're doing just text or writing and all of that, then you can approach a production or publishing company and strike a deal with them for production and sales, as the case may be. If you don't want to do physical copies, you can do, of course, you can relate with Amazon. They do publish on you know, their site and all of that. You can have an anthology of your own, compile it together, and then have mm -hmm. a strike with these companies and that way you can generate some income for yourself and all of that then of course you can also make an album you can also like when i did my album in 2016 i did an album of poetry but i was the thing was just shocking me that i had to do like 10 tracks of the album and all of that so uh, <laughs> when it out, i i did a luncheon and then by god's grace we realized a lot of money on that luncheon day and people were buying mm -hmm. CDs, buying the CDs, both uh, in the city, both. In, but uh, I, I had one of my aunties who sent money, a lot of money for me to export the CD for her, bring the CD for her. Wow. I had not had wow. it on the internet, actually. She just wanted to see the CD, have a feel of it, and all of that. It's also a way you can make, uh, some people are making audio poems now, so you can do albums and then sell, you know, on the internet, as the case may be, mm. or, or YouTube do your visuals, um, as the case may be, and then publish on YouTube. People subscribe to your channel and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Then, of course, you can also write well-thought-out um, sweet poems on cards. Like, it could be mm -hmm. card, it could be um, normal company cards, it could be any kind of cards. Mm -hmm. When you write these things, with sweet lines or sweet poetry, a very beautiful piece, write it on a card and then, you know, sell to companies for their complimentary giveaways as the case may be for valentine for end of the year for middle of the year promotion as the mm -hmm. case may be. all of these things you can distribute it to companies and they, and they, and they get to buy or you can make you can make friends I, I was having a deal with someone last year and we were strategizing what we i, I will not give you so much information about that now you pay for that one uh we, we, oh. we are trying to we are trying to do um frames and these frames will be frames you hang in your houses and these films mm -hmm. will be really poems, you know, poems that, uh, you know, that befits whatever mood or whatever thing you want to interpret in your house, as the case may be. So if we do that, we'll create it to friends, beautiful friends. People will come and be buying it and stuff like that. You can market it online on your, instead of displaying. The thing is that we don't really explore some of the opportunities that we have. The internet, the, the WhatsApp, the Instagram uh, are being misused, are being underused, as the case may be. Mm -hmm project what we have through this media we can we can we can project ourselves what we do and all of that apart from that too of course you you, you can actually organize a poetry reading show you know we're talking about mm -hmm. yeah. right now poetry show a poetry show where people can get a ticket and come for mm -hmm. listen they are coming to listen to people perform they are coming to listen mm -hmm. to uh, renditions of people they are coming to see people express themselves we can have it mm. and all of that. It's just like a kind of packaged poetry show that you create Thank a you. website and people buy tickets and come for it. You can organize with yeah, you can organize with your with your partners or your colleagues as the case may be and then create awareness for them. People come, you know, for the shows and buy mm. it. These are some ways that we can actually go about poetry or go with poetry economically and then make some mm. money. Because not at the end of the day, I know most of the people who write poetry do it out of passion. I know, but then, mm. but then 
your passion must also sustain you somehow. So we can actually, you know, make make a lot of um, profits and then economic realities and poetry. All right, thank you, thank you, Brian, so much. I really appreciate all your insights. Like I'm very sure that uh, everyone uh, has enjoyed you today on our show voices of poets thank you so much for joining us thank you for for everything you you poured out today like it's been very inspiring today i've learned a lot about projecting projecting as a as a, as a writer as a creative writer as a poet project properly project um nigeria project africa in a better way you know i've also learned about um poetry shows we can start poetry shows we can do audio poetry we can do visuals we can do stage we can do song you know several other things you know and i've also learned that people I've go have so many ideas right now so i'm looking up to you right now to 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 call for, me up for what? right now see why no yeah you don't share oh yeah let's go let's go <laughs> <laughs> sure now you know you know yes it's coming it's, it's coming up yeah so um, thank you so much for joining us today. And everyone who has joined us, Joshua, Ayo, Deji, I can see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Please follow our YouTube page at Poets Factory, Twitter at Poets Factory, Facebook at Poets Factory. I appreciate you. Remember that Poets Factory is on a mission to raise a platform for young poets and writers so that they can lend their voices inspire their words through spoken words poetry poems and great write-ups we are the inspiration that captures the heart when you think of poets, poets factory you think of inspiration anything inspira inspiring is words we chunk out we don't chunk out things that are not inspiring because we know people are already dealing with a lot of things already so we are the inspiration that captures the art our vision is to grow a global community where young writers and poets can learn where young writers and poets can can liberate their world from oppression, suppression, and depression, making us the one of the biggest inspiring resource and poetry resource of all time. So we are on a journey, we are on a mission. And also uh June, come June, uh we'll be launching our first in a series of uh, um read it aloud. We're gonna be having our first virtual read it aloud program at uh Poets Factory and we'll be sharing the um the zoom link to everyone who wants to be part of it so we can you can register we'll let you know on our on our various platforms so you can register for for the event you know it's going to be a virtual read it aloud where poet, poets and writers and all those who love poetry can come together and you know you know uh, recite their poems you know and 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 share various inspirations together Thank you again for joining Buying the Poet. I appreciate you. It's been great, you know, having you on today's show, Voices of Poets. In Poets Factory, Voices of Poets, we are we have a goal this year to interview a minimum of 50 guests, poets and writers on our platform. So we know we are going to achieve that this year. And you also help us do so. So if you know any poet or or or, or, or a writer who would like to be on this show, please let them know, send them an email. They can email us at poetsfactory at gmail.com, info at poetsfactory.com. Thank you. We're expecting you. Or you mail me, moyosola, at poetsfactory.com. Or send us a DM, any of our social media handles. We will appreciate it. We would love to have you. Thank you again. I remain Moyosola Olalekon, the founder and lead creator of Poets Factory. See you again and see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I can see Emma Messi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I'm sure we learned a whole lot already today. So it's, there's going to be a replay on our Instagram link and on our YouTube handle. Please follow us at Quest Factory. And don't forget to subscribe and drop the love button, you know, on our YouTube page especially. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Take care.